What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Varsity Overland channel. Today I am doing a one year review of my iCamper SkyCamp rooftop tent, as well as a comparison between the SkyCamp 2.0 and the SkyCamp 3.0. Right now on iCamper's website, you can choose between getting a SkyCamp 2.0 or 3.0. They're having like a, you know, last sale for their old model 2.0 before you know, the 3.0 is the only option. So which one should you go for? I'm gonna go through all the differences between the two. And if you're like me and you wanna save some money, you're definitely gonna go for the 2.0 because personally, I don't think the differences are really all that big. But stick around and see for yourself. All right, people, so before we even open up the tent, there are two differences or upgrades from the 2.0, SkyCamp 2.0 to the 3.0. And those are, one, the color options, and two, the locks. So the SkyCamp 2.0 color options, there are three that you can choose from. There's the glossy black, like I have, there's the kind of matte, rugged black that's a little bit more like a, like a rhino liner um, or a truck bed liner. And then there's a white, a glossy white. So the difference between the 2.0 and the 3.0 there is that the 3.0 does not have the glossy white option. And I have heard a couple people um, mention this on YouTube and on Instagram, people who currently own the SkyCamp 2.0 in glossy white and how you know they're a little reluctant to upgrade to the 3.0 because the glossy white is kind of factored into the whole dynamic of their their build and the color scheme that they have going on and if they were to upgrade to the 3.0 they no longer have the option of making their rooftop tent white and then that might you know throw off their whole their whole color scheme i don't really think that's a huge deal but if you're if you're into the white colored rooftop tents, then you're probably gonna end up going for something else like another brand such as Roof Nest that has a lot of white rooftop tent options. Um, I have the glossy black finish. It, it was the cheapest option. It's probably the one that you see the most. Uh, if I could go back and, and get a new one, I definitely would have gotten the rugged kind of like um, matte black rhino lined version uh, just because of the scratching involved all the pinstriping it's maybe you can't see it here but there's definitely a lot of scratching from branches and stuff like that when you get an eye camper um, sky camp it does come with um, a cleaning material a wax that you can put on it I think I've only done it once that I can remember I might have done it twice but honestly it's kind of a pain in the butt I would have definitely rather gone with something that was not going to scratch easy. So moving on to the locks next, um, the big difference between the 2.0 and the 3.0 is that the latching mechanism, although it looks really similar and it pretty much functions the same way, the attachment point on the bottom where the wire kind of loops around this, this little clip here, this clip is actually up top by the lock itself. So when you put in your keys, all right, what happens right now is it relieves the pressure on the bottom and then you can just unclip it there. What'll happen on the 3.0 is when you put in your keys like that and you pull down to relieve the pressure, it actually, this piece is right here. So it'll relieve the pressure and then you'll be able to take the loop, this loop up here, just take it right off. So the reason why they did this um, is not necessarily like an aesthetic thing. It's definitely more of a functionality thing. And it doesn't apply too heavily to the setup that I have. Okay, so what I have going on right now 
with my locks works perfectly. However, there's a lot of people who have had problems with accessing these locks. I, I have no problem, as you can see, I have no problem unlocking it and then reaching the loop that's on the bottom to, um, to pull away here, okay? But I'd imagine if I had like a camper shell on the top of my bed or, you know, maybe like an SUV, someone who just uses their, their uh, cab rack or, you know, the, the roof rack, um, if they need to get to this little piece and it's hidden behind like a sturdy piece of metal like that and they have to like fish their fingers in and try to unlatch it, I, I could totally see how that would be a big pain and um, an issue for them. And it would probably, you know, after reading reviews and stuff, it'd probably sway some people away from getting the tent. So in my opinion, I would definitely say that's a smart change for iCamper on their 3.0 making the uh making the locks accessible from the actual keyhole um so there's really no issue with trying to reach your hand under the tent between you know the bar in the tent or between your your roof rack in the tent um it's just it makes it a lot easier to get to so the next major difference has to do with the poles Okay, the metal poles that they give you inside of your eye camper in order to prop up all of the um, awnings and windscreens. So you notice that the eye camper 2.0 has a bag that they give you, okay, with all of your poles, awning poles inside. Um, and I had to fish this thing out to open this up here. Um, so what's different with the iCamper 3.0 versus the 2.0 is this bag is actually stitched right to the side here, right on the inside of the tent itself. Um, it's stitched right on the right on the edge, and uh, I think it's I think it's closed exactly the same way. But it's right here, and it never moves which is kind of nice. Um, I don't really think it makes that big of a deal to me. I end up just leaving mine right on the inside, right next to the mattress, and I've never had an issue with it moving ever. But um, at least with this way, you know, you always know where you're gonna find it. And uh, it, like I said about the locks, it's easy to access, access those, those poles. Um, Another item that is different about the poles themselves is the attachment points where the poles go in to prop up all of your window awnings. So what you'll notice is if I'm going to put in the pole right here, it's beneath the tent itself. And let's just say that I happen to have a, um, a bed topper like a, like a camper shell or even if I was mounting my awning, um, like I thought about doing in the past, my, my Rome Adventure awning, if I was planning on mounting it here, either on the rack itself, on my Yakima rack, or on the back of the eye camper, if I put it there, accessing this, this port for the um, window pole would be a little bit more difficult. So what they've done instead is they've kind of drilled out a hole right along the Right along the side of the framing for the rooftop tent and that's where your where your window pole um, would go inside now moving on to the inside of the tent as far as the sleeping arrangement the whole interior pretty much looks the same. You're still going to get your map on the back wall. Um, the mattress, I think, has been updated so that it is made of a different material. I believe that the measurement for the thickness is still the same. Um, I compared it to the measurement that I was given on my eye camper, and I believe it's exactly the same. It just might have a different material inside the mattress itself. I can't imagine 
that it's monumentally different than most other rooftop tent mattresses. Um, when we camp for an extended period of time up here inside the iCamper, camper, we always bring up our own mattress anyway. If I'm doing a one nighter, um, I get real lazy about it and I just use the one that's up here. But if it's a longer trip for us, you know, three, four or more nights, we always uh, bring up our own mattress to put down on top of it. So take that for what it is. They updated their mattress, um, but there's not a whole lot of detail about what the mattress is, the thickness, the material, whatever. Um, now for the windows and the accessibility of the zippers, the new zippers on the iCamp 3.0 um, look very similar. However, both sets of zippers that operate both the, I guess you could call it like the, the bug, the bug screen, um, and then the windscreen on the outside, both sets of those zippers are actually together. So you can zip the entire thing closed all at once without having to fumble with, you know, three different sets of zippers like there are in the 2.0. I don't find it all that inconvenient. I really don't think it's a big deal. Just unzip one, unzip the other. It takes an extra 10 seconds, maybe, probably more like five seconds, but I don't really think it's a big deal. However, I will admit, one of the downsides, I believe, is the middle window uh, is gone. So this extra plastic piece is no longer available. Um, I don't know if it was kind of like troublesome, if they didn't feel it was really worth it to produce it, but the only ones available now are the mesh screen, the bug screen, whatever you want to call that one, um, and then the windshield on the outside, which can all be zipped together. Uh, what's also unique about the 3.0's windows are... I can't remember what they called it, but it's basically like a pulley system for blinds. So that windscreen that's on the inside, there are pulleys that hang around the outside of the window and you can actually pull those pulleys and then tie them closed or latch them closed on the bottom, much like how this works right here through the loop system. Um, you can pull it and it actually will pop up or fall back down if you let go and you and you don't tie it. So it literally acts like, you know, a set of blinds would from your house um, inside your tent. I think that's a little, I don't know what the word is, um, gimmicky maybe is the right way to put it. Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know, a little extra. I don't really care for that. Big deal. There's blinds. Like, is it really all that all that better than just simply zipping or unzipping something to be able to see outside. Um, so you, you can make that judgment obviously for yourself. Like most other things I've mentioned, it's not a game changer for me. So the final piece of new information um, for the interior of the tent on the SkyCamp 3.0 is they adjusted the hinges, the clamshell hinges on the, on the back side of the tent so that when it closes shut, it has a little bit more levelness to it as it's coming coming down. So with that, iCamper says that you'll be able to store um, your sleeping bags, unrolled flat sleeping bags on the back side of the tent as it's closing. Now, when I bought this tent, there was somewhere, I can't remember if it was iCamper or other reviews that I saw, but somewhere along the line, someone did say that you could store sleeping bags up here. Uh, and now iCamper is claiming officially that you can store sleeping bags up in the 3.0. So that's pretty cool. Um, it does allow, you know, for a little bit extra storage space. You don't have to worry about putting your sleeping bags down with all your other gear inside your truck or your, your rig. Um, it's really just on the far side that, that there was an issue as far as closing with anything in there. You can actually see here with my 2.0, you can see the mattress has a, has a bend to it on the back side because of the way that the clamshell closes the hinges don't really they don't really they're not very forgiving you know it's it's really tight back there um you can't store anything here obviously because that's that's where this section of the tent needs to fold over so 
this space is not available ever. Um, but on the 3.0, they claim that that space on the back side of the tent is available for flat, compressible items, I guess you could say. So the last item that I'm going to mention that makes the 2.0 and 3.0 different is the addition on the 3.0, the addition of a cable access point. And it's somewhere around here in the corner of the floor for the eye camper. Um, and what it really is is sort of like a rubber grommet, I guess you could say. It's like a, a plugged hole that you can run cords to up inside the tent. And uh, it also gets covered besides the fact that it's, it's rubber. It's like one of those, you know, one way only kind of ports. Um, once you push something through the rubber that's sealing the inside opens up and it doesn't allow anything to come back down. Um, other than that, preventing any dust or water from getting into your tent at night, it's also placed in the corner here. So when you take these, um, these stretchy strings, over the top, it conceals the port a second time to kind of prevent anything from getting in. So some people have made a big deal about that and I can understand that, you know, if you are someone who tries to put some sort of um, powered heating or cooling up into your tent and there's a cord that you need to run out um, maybe into like a battery powered system like a red arc or you know something bigger something bigger than like your typical jackery that you just have to bring up into the tent with you for stuff like that i could understand how that is definitely appealing however could it be a diy thing that you could do yourself i would think probably yes um so like everything else you know is it a cool addition that makes the 3.0 different and you know possibly more appealing i'd say maybe does it really change anything for me no so those are all the things that make the sky camp 2.0 and the sky camp 3.0 different from each other um you know so you could take it for what it is if you're someone who just likes to have the newest latest and greatest version of that item if you don't want to be driving around, you know, or, 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 you know, going on an adventure with the old version of that rooftop tent, because you feel like everyone's going to have the new version, then, you know, none of that information is really going to matter. And you're just going to, you're just going to get the new tent and that's fine. I, you know, I, I can't say that I don't do that. I bought a brand new redesigned ZR2 in 2021 because it was one of the trucks that was newly redesigned. So I fall victim to the same thing, all right? But on iCamper's website, they are selling both the 2.0 and the 3.0. And the 2.0 has a little bit of a discount. It is, I believe, depending on the tent, uh, it is $200 cheaper than it used to be. Um, and as of a half hour ago, I went on the website and I was able to check off the glossy white option. So I, I feel like they still have it. I don't know if it's out of stock. Um, if you're watching this video, you know, months and months from now, it's June. Uh, I can't guarantee that you're gonna get away with, with buying one, but those are the options. So moving away from the comparison between the 2.0 and 3.0, what I wanna do quickly, because I don't want this video to get too long and winded, but what I wanna do quickly is kind of describe my experience with the Sky Camp 2.0 over the past year. I got it in February of 2021 and it is currently June of 2022. So it has definitely been over a year and we have used the heck out of this tent. Uh, we've done trips to local trips, kind of like just around the state. We have done trips on the East Coast to Virginia, to Vermont, to um, North Carolina. Um, and we have also been across to the other side of the country with this truck and this tent in Utah, in Oregon, Washington, California, Colorado, Montana. We did the whole, you know, we did the whole uh, see every national park that you could in a short period of time kind of game, right? Um, and we use the Sky Camp the entire time. So we are definitely pushing, if not exceeding, 100 nights in this tent over the past year or so. So here are my impressions. All right, let's start with the good. 
the good about this tent, it is a tank. This tent has withstood snowstorms, you know, with like inches of snow piled on top of it. And then, you know, freezing rain, adding more weight to that. This tent has withstood thunderstorms and rainstorms and windstorms. In fact, the very first night we ever spent in this tent was in the George Washington National Forest of Virginia. Uh, and within minutes of arriving at our very first campsite, wind started howling, thunder cracking, sky opened up, rain came down. It was a monsoon, it felt like. Uh, and nothing, nothing has happened to this tent. Um, it has been hit with branches. It has, you know, pine cones fall on it you know, all the time and different items from, from the trees because, you know, I've got a lot of trees in this area and um, it's just a little too tall to fit in my garage when the tent's mounted. So this thing just gets bombarded all the time on the trails, in the driveway, um, weather, just whatever, you know, and it, it has not had any issues. I haven't noticed any major dents, cracks, warping, nothing like that to the shell on the outside or even the canvas material. Let's see if I can get a good image here. I mean, it's looking pretty good up there. So, I mean, like I said about the rugged version, if I had gone with that, it would have been great. I would have, I would have enjoyed it more than the uh, glossy black finish. However, it, that does not mean that this tent has not held up probably as well as the other one. The living space on the inside of the tent, I feel like is ginormous. It is the size of a California King up here. Um, and when it's me, my fiance and our dog inside of her crate, we still feel like we have plenty of space. We're not on top of one another. We're not cramped up into a corner. There's, there is a lot of room and if I can, I'll show, I'll show some pictures um, of the inside when we have a lot of stuff going on, especially when we're using the insulation because we have taken this thing camping in the winter um, in the snow and you know, for other rooftop tents, if there is an insulation layer that you can attach to the inside to keep yourselves warm, it definitely shrinks uh, the interior dimensions. So, having a tent that is this large and adding the interior insulation it shrinks slightly but it doesn't shrink enough to be like oh this tent went from a two-person tent to a one-person tent holy cow we can't fit up here as a family um i would say the dimensions around all of the edges around all of the walls might shrink by one to two inches at the most so the interior is still very spacious, even when adding the um, insulation layer. All right, so lastly, I'm gonna go over my three picks for, um, I wouldn't say problems, but you know, little small gripes that I have with the tent. Uh, number one, first and foremost, this thing is heavy as heck. Uh, it's, I think it, in the specs, it says 160 pounds, and I understand if you want quality material, it's gonna be a little bit thicker, it's gonna be a little bit more durable and heavier, so that's where the weight's probably coming from. But man, getting this thing, muscling this thing up onto the rack every time we wanna go camping, uh, we just don't look forward to it, like at all. And we don't really have an easy way to do it. It's actually part of the reason why I decided to get a rack, a bed rack, instead of a camper shell, because we rest it on the first rack here and then push it up together. Um, to get it up there and you know it's just a lot it's a lot and I know there's probably not a whole lot that they can do about it as far as the weight uh, the weight rating or the weight of the tent is concerned but um, it's just heavy that's you know that's that's my first and, and biggest biggest complaint I guess you could say um, if anybody knows about the weight of the 3.0 and whether or not it changed uh, let me know. Comment down below and let me know if they made it any lighter, if there's anything that they could do. Um, the second thing that I have uh, that was a little bit of an issue was, I'll see if I could do it at this angle, the brackets, okay? The brackets that come with the SkyCamp 2.0 um, 
are not these brackets. These are actually the Sky Camp 1.0 uh, or whatever they called their original tent. This is what those brackets are. And the reason why I had to get them is because the brackets that came with the 2.0 were not large enough to fit around my Yakima overhaul HD bars. Um, and I definitely know that there are other racks that are this thick and have the same issue. So after the fact, I had to go back to iCamper's website and buy those brackets separate than the ones that came with the tent. That was a little bit of a pain in the butt um, and kind of, I don't know, it's an inconvenience. It is a little bit extra money. It's not like it was, you know, hundreds of dollars, but still, is there any way to make brackets that are just a little bit more adaptable? Uh, my third and final complaint about the tent is the ladder. The ladder, although it does its job, it holds the weight of the overall tent well. Um, two things happen to it. Number one, it gets stuck. Uh, these little joints, these little joints will get stuck so that the ladder won't slide up and down as easy um, as it did when I first got it. I don't know if dust and like other particles have gotten inside, um, you know, so maybe it's just wear and tear over time. Does that happen to other rooftop tent ladders? Um, if you have experience with, you know, if you don't have an eye camper, but you have experience with the same issue on your tent, let me know. Um, so that's the first issue. The other issue is, I'll see if I can pick it up. There you go. So on the bottom of the ladder itself, you can see how the rubber, I guess you could say like the rubber footing or the rubber shoe on the bottom um, has broken. And that actually, like that happened a while ago. I'd say that happened six months after we had it. So that's supposed to be the part that, you know, hits the, hits the ground, um, the part that stops it from sliding you know, which is a little bit of a safety issue, possibly. Uh, and so that's the part that also gets exposed when you fold it back up into the tent. It hasn't caused any problems when I fold it up in there. It hasn't like torn the canvas or anything like that. Um, just, you know, it's just a little bit of like a, oh, come on. Like, you know, that had to happen. Is there any way to fix that? I'm not about to like, you know, jerry rig it and duct tape it all up. Like I've seen some people do. Um, cause just because I, I kind of feel like that looks a little, little janky but um those are my those are my three complaints about the current 2.0 all right people well that's going to be it for today's video um and before anybody comments down below yes i know that there's a canvas bag that you're supposed to put around the foot of your ladder when you fold it up into the tent and we definitely do that we do that every time uh i don't know why that that escaped my mind just now when i when i mentioned um how the bare metal is exposed up there. But yeah, I already know about the canvas bag, so you don't need to flood the comments down below and let me know that I forgot something. Um, we definitely use that. But anyway, uh, if I got something wrong about the 3.0, especially the 3.0, um, comment and let me know so that I can make an adjustment in the description um, and just kind of like inform future viewers of this of this video uh, that there might have been a piece of incorrect incorrect information there about the 3.0. But that's all I got for you guys today. I appreciate you sticking around and I'll see you next time. Peace, people.